Let's start out here by removing the dial assembly itself, those two fasteners here, each side of the uh, tuning control. We'll get those out. And then also we'll take note here at the uh, dial string location again. You can see those pathways. And taking note here of the winding direction of the dial cord around that uh, bottom pulley and the uh, number of wraps as well. And one more look here at the uh, routing of the dial cord. You can see it's on the uh, inside of uh, each push button here, just to the inside, just for uh, reference. And here we have just uh, two fasteners here that hold the uh, dial glass in place. So I'm going to go ahead and get those removed and get the uh, dial glass over to the side here so I don't have to worry about breaking it. And removing those two supporting brackets, as you can see here, there's typically some uh, foam or rubber placed in between that uh, butts up against each side of the dial glass just to uh, provide some protection. And then when I go back to uh, actually replace the uh, dial glass, I'll use some uh, foam rubber in those areas just so we don't have to worry about tightening a fastener down. Beautiful dial glass. And even with my uh, video here, I'm going to go ahead and take time just to go ahead and put these uh, mounting brackets here that support the dial glass uh, back on. And um, of course, they'll be removed uh, later when we do some de-rusting, but just for uh, now, be a good uh, placeholder. And a quick look here at the uh, deteriorated rubber piece that I was talking about. You can see it's had better days. And two more fasteners here on the uh, front side to remove. And you can see that also um, holds the uh, felt pieces in as well that's cut around the uh, push button assembly. And another look here at the fasteners that were uh, used. And uh, you'll notice this is also insulated which is uh, kind of odd so I'll probably just go back with some grommets uh, in between these areas and try to use the existing fasteners when all possible, assuming I can get those de-rusted. The brown felt material here around the uh, dial assembly, I'm just uh, cutting it loose. It's going to be replaced during the restoration process. A nasty smell anyway, where I think some uh, mice have been up against it. Here's a, uh, a good look at that fastener I was talking about with the spacers in between. And then just doing the same here for the other side. And I can just uh, pop that out here. And you can see the uh, aging effect that it's had on the old uh, rubber materials here. They just uh, come apart in your hands when you're trying to get these old uh, spacer uh, and grommets out. A couple more fasteners here on uh, top of the... Uh, chassis itself to remove as well. More foam or like a rubbery type material that was used back behind the uh, dial assembly. Best I can tell when I get this thing back together I'll look to uh, you know reproduce that. And a look here at the uh, sliding dial and the associated pointer. Uh, you can see how it slides across the uh, track. Looks like some wax was placed in there. You can see. We'll go back and uh, probably do the same thing. Let me go ahead and get the uh, dial lamp off here. And we'll take a look at the uh, pointer here just a little closer. And as a backer itself, you can see brown felt is just glued uh, back to that piece of metal. And uh, let's go ahead and get these other fasteners off here. I think that's, uh, we're down just to a few now. And uh, that looks like that attaches directly back to the uh, tuning condenser itself. We'll get those removed and uh, see what we have left here. You can see here a common practice where you have a uh, tooth washer used. And uh, you can see this metal separation plate for reference as well. When we put this back together, it was on the uh, outside used as a uh, spacer in that uh, void area there. Looking at that dial string just a little closer, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then these additional fasteners here, I don't believe I need to take those loose. And uh, 
but I'm going to go ahead and remove this first one and uh, just see what that gets me. You'll notice the uh, custom washer here that uh, resides right up against the uh, shaft itself of the uh, push button assembly. So uh, I'll just put that aside for now, but uh, looking at it, I think I can just leave those in place. In a close-up shot here, you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm zoomed in here just a bit, and you can see where the uh, washer and the fastener was removed from. And with the uh, chassis tilted back again, I'm just taking a look at the two leads that uh, come up from underneath the chassis to the uh, dual gang tuning condenser. I'll get my uh, cutters and clip those. And uh, there was an, also an additional third braided ground lead as well that uh, ties back to the uh, tuning condenser here that I had to uh, clip as well. And after doing so, I was able to uh, free the uh, tuning condenser here from the uh, chassis itself, as you can see. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, two spacers used one on the outside, and here's the other spacer that slid down. It was used on the inside of the uh, tuning condenser itself. So um, I'll reassemble that in just a moment, just to make sure I understand how the parts go back together. And uh, we've got this too for a good visual documentation as well. With the uh, tuning condenser out of my way, looks like I got this one fastener left right here in the center back that I need to uh, remove. And then I should be able to uh, just pull the uh, mechanical uh, push button tuning assembly out. And you can see this thing is seized up. So I'm um, just trying a screwdriver, a larger screwdriver, grabbing some uh, pliers. Let me uh, try to soak this in a little WD-40 and uh, see if we can soften it up enough. You know, the WD-40 seemed to do the trick here. I let that uh, just sit for a few minutes and grab my uh, flat pliers here. was able to get a hold of the old uh, fastener that's a little disformed. Get my uh, screwdriver back in here and uh, safely get that removed. And you can see this was also the uh, grounding location back to the uh, tuning condenser as well. And a closer look here at the spacer and the grommets that were used here. Uh, more of a standoff back from the uh, chassis to the uh, tuning condenser. And you can see again on this one side another rubber washer that's had better days. That was up against the uh, front side. I didn't see one on the right side. And uh, just looking to see what's still holding this in. And you can see I've got this uh, braided copper strap back over from the dial assembly back over to the uh, band switch itself. So I'm going to cut that for now. And uh, I think this uh, should be the uh, last thing here holding the uh, dial assembly actually in place. See if we can get it pulled through here. And we finally got it here. So uh, really cool, all mechanical, not electrical. And here's that one fastener that I uh, noted earlier that I removed. And uh, we'll just place it back in. You can see, again, it has no reason to be removed at this point in time. I'll investigate these a little closer as we get uh, deeper into the uh, restoration process. And looking back here, that's that one uh, spacer, the plate, that was on the inside closest to the uh, tuning condenser here for uh, reference. And since I'm not going to be tackling this tuning condenser within the next day or so, even though I've got this video to go back and reference the uh, disassembly, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this back because I want to play around just a moment with the uh, tuning mechanism itself and understand how the uh, geared pieces uh, come together and how to uh, rotate the uh, tuning condenser itself through its uh, full range here. Just so I've got that well documented when I get ready to put this thing back together. If it's a month from now or two months from now or even a week from now, I can look back at this and uh, have it for uh, you know mental reference here. And a real nice uh, mechanical engineering design here. You can see they're using uh, screws that uh, are located at different distances back to a plate. 
with uh, screws and uh, depending on the uh, depth of course or the adjustment of the screw in or out it uh, allows you to uh, rotate the uh, tuning condenser across its path so uh, pretty clever and it's not seized up even though it's uh, got a lot of rust here that we'll have to uh, take care of but um, I see no reason that we can't get this thing back together and working in great shape so wrapping up here let me get all the uh, tuning condenser uh, parts and pieces off the bench just stick them in a little uh, plastic shoe box for now and then again, I'll have this video for reference when it comes time to uh, start doing de-rusting and taking more of the parts and pieces apart. Thanks again for watching, and you guys take care.